Let's begin the fifth lecture on piezoelectric materials. Which is going to be talking about <clears throat> treatment of losses. And we can think of losses as internal friction. In mechanical systems, uh, typically uh, we have a system where we have a spring, we have a mass, and to represent losses, we have some type of dash pot. And this dash pot applies a force to the to the uh, moving mass, and it kind of dissipates the energy within that system. So we recognize first of all that when we let's, let's talk about friction as well. When we move a material, let's say we apply a force to the material, and the force is equal to the weight of the material, mass times g times the some friction coefficient, right? We'll call it kinetic. So and this is the uh, force which is we need to apply. So if you move this material, let's say delta x then the force input or the energy we needed to move it or the work we did was force times delta x but the question is what is this is this energy that we applied in the material is it stored anywhere can we get it back take for example in the other case where we had a mass and we had a spring and then we applied a force and we apply a force uh, we would get the force is equal to the uh, distance moved times the spring constant and this would supply the force and we can also in a similar case we could we can get the energy so basically the energy input or the force over distance that would end up being one half k x squared the distance that we traveled squared and this would be the work on the energy so the the work on the sp that we did on the spring but this work we can recover because we know this is spring energy which if we release it if we release this force the spring at this material after moving down it's just gonna pop back out so we're gonna get this energy that it'll be either converted into mechanical energy meaning uh, it'll be converted into kinetic energy and potential energy which is uh, the elastic spring energy so we realize there's two different things going on here. In the one in this case we have reversible energy. Or we could say stored energy. And in this case we had irreversible. Or we call it lost. Energy we cannot we can no longer get back. So piezoelectric materials also see a similar trend. So they are springs, you know, as we mentioned. What's the spring constant of a piezoelectric material? A over Ls. Or actually, this, the spring constant is Al over S. But when we want to talk about the energy in a piezoelectric material, we, we do this. You know, we, we notice that because of the um, strain, we're talking strain, not displacement. Here we're going to talk of displacement. We'll just call that delta x for displacement and strain as just x squared. But anyways, uh, we have the uh, we have the spring constant like this. So we can also determine and and understand the energy in a piezoelectric material or any material for that matter by stretching the material. And then we see how it's a spring. I mentioned this in the very first lecture or the second lecture that if you pull on the material, it's going to behave somewhat like a spring. It's equivalent, depending on your your modeling efficiency. This is not, but this is not the whole story. So, according up till now, we understand this concept: that we have a force and we have a displacement, and it's a straight line. 
and this slope of this line is k, which in the case of a real material, a rectangular type of material, would be a l over s. This is the spring constant. <clears throat> So, but in a actual material, what, what we have a path dependence of the material property. So I'll show you what happens. So when, when we stretch this material, material out, when we pull on it, and it becomes bigger by pulling on it, the spring extends. It's losing some of that energy. So how do we visually represent this on the diagram? How do we lose energy? See, the energy is stored in a material is the energy under the curve. This is where that one half comes from. You know we talk about one half k delta x squared for the energy of a spring. This is where that one half comes from because of it's a triangle area under the triangle. So the units of uh, the integral of force versus displacement is energy which is the elastic energy. But I mentioned that we don't get all of it back. After applying a certain force we don't get it back. It, it undergoes an irreversible um, mechanism. So in the case of a friction, so if we had this material, if we had the material and we had and we were pushing on it and it had a certain coefficient of friction mg and this is going to be the work, this is the force and the force times the displacement is equal to the work done on the material to move it from one place to another place. Then we could also draw this force displacement diagram. So when we draw its force displacement diagram, when we move it from here to here, when we're pushing it forward, assume this is the positive coordinate direction, when we're pushing this mass forward we get positive displacement. But when we push the mass backward, we're applying a negative force, right? So basically what happens is we apply this force here to get it there, and we apply this force here to get it back. The overlap of these two areas is zero. So we apply this force over here to get it there. And actually, sorry, I do it incorrectly. The force is constant, so it's a box. With the spring, the more you push the spring, the stiffer, the more force you need. So that's why it's the triangle. That's why it's one half kx squared. But in this case, we're pre we're pushing the with the same amount the the whole time, so we get this type of uh, relationship. And then, in the other way, when we're coming backward, we're applying a negative force, right? Because we're, we're pushing it the other way. So when we're applying a negative force, um, we are now losing energy again. So basically, we didn't store any, ener any energy. We didn't recover any of the energy that we spent on, this, on pushing this material. So now let's compare that with the spring, that we push the spring And this is equal to, I'm going to draw in all the same colors so we can get understand. This is equal to this. Now, while we are retracting the spring, the spring got stiffed, and then we're, 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 we're slowly easing off of it. The spring is still pushing against us. But although the spring is pushing against us, we are slowly, we are slowly releasing it. So first, we're pushing it with this big arrow. A force, and then as soon when we when we decrease the size of the arrow, the spring gets longer, and finally when we completely decrease the decrease the uh, size of the force we're pushing on the uh, material, on the spring, then this is force zero. This is force equal, let's say, smaller, and this is large force. So we understand as we are releasing the force, uh, we're still applying a force to the spring, but we're, redu we're reducing the spring. So basically what happens is that on the in the yellow portion, we're pushing the spring. We're pushing and pushing, and it's, it's, getting, it's, it's feeling more force because you have to push harder and harder to get it softer and softer, to get it smaller and smaller. But then when we come back, we come back just like that, in the same way, because we're just releasing the force. So we're still pushing on it technically. We're looking at it from the perspective of the person who's pushing on it. We're not looking at the perspective of the spring. See, when I push a spring, the spring pushes back with an equal and opposite force, right? 
But we're not thinking about it from this perspective perspective of the spring. We're thinking about it from the perspective of the person pushing on the spring. So in this case, now we're releasing the spring and we're going back down this line. Now, I mentioned in real materials and even real springs, you don't get all the energy back that you put into it. I mentioned already that the area under this is the energy. So what does it mean not to get all the energy back? This is what the, this is what the graph will look like. See this green, this is initially the energy which is stored in the spring, which we which you put in the spring. But then when you're releasing, the spring is doing work on you. Basically when you're releasing this when you're when you're releasing it, basically the force is still positive, right? Because you're still pushing on it, or if you, if you let go, it'll completely push you back. So the force is still positive, but the displacement that's undergoing is negative. Therefore, the work is negative. So, uh, therefore, it's doing work on you, meaning you're recovering. You're recovering the force. Recovering. The energy. So when you recover the energy, you, it's basically like the spring is doing work on you now. But I mentioned all of the energy is not recovered. Therefore, it follows this path down right here. When we're recovering the energy, we, we don't get the same energy. Because now, this is the energy that we're recovering. This is all highlighted in purple. And now what's left is this green part in the middle. See this green bit right here. That part is left. Or now it's blue. This part right here is the loss energy. So basically the purple is recovered. And the blue is lost energy. So we don't get all the energy back. And what this is called is hysteresis. Hysteresis, meaning we lose energy. Energy, or in other words, we don't recover it. So this is a very important concept to understand uh, with regards to real materials that you're going to put in it, or you're going to put in energy, and you're not going to get it all back. And this is because there's some irreversible processes which occur. And I mentioned in piezoelectric materials, domain while motion. is going to be mostly responsible uh, for this phenomenon. In the next lecture, we're going to introduce how to apply this idea of hysteresis to piezoelectric materials with regards to their elastic compliance. meaning S and we'll also do it with the permittivity and we're also going to find that we're going to need to do it as well with the uh, piezoelectric charge constant even but um, we'll start with these basic discussions about how we can get a capacitor which you can't recover all the energy how can you get a spring like material piezoelectric material that does not recover all the energy and soon we'll go over what that practically means. Thank you for watching.